There. Wow. Everyone can see their stuff? Yep. Mm-hmm. I can see Vasili's, yours. We're good to go. Yes, wow. Sir. Of course, the last one, we have the technical issues where we had to restart for three freaking times. Oh, yeah. Only a minute in, unlike previous episodes where we have to restart after recording a whole hour and a half. Yeah, can you imagine? Actually, that would be more of a type. Like, if, if, uh, if that's, that's not, what let's happened. Let's not will it into existence by talking about it. Let's just... Let's just see what we're doing. Yeah. Okay. That sounds about right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to part one of the finale. Final episode of the F Word podcast. I am your host, G, and with me is Anthony and Vass. What's, What's up? up? Hello, everybody. It's your boy, Skinny Penis. I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't wow. Know. Oh, wow. That's like two years. You haven't said that for a long time. Yikes. It's a, it's wow. a comeback. It's a reference. It's a nostalgia episode for all those people that used to follow us during the live stream days. Mm-hmm. For some reason, you decided to have that as your tag. Um, yeah you heard this right and if you're listening to the second part of this and there's no intro there's a reason why this is our final episode and it'll be in two parts um we are recording one full length episode mostly because of our schedules not jiving for the next like going forward in the next couple of weeks so it's like you know what we decided we're going to do one long episode and we're going to split it in two parts so the next one's not going to start the same way um and it'll just you know We'll just naturally split it, and we'll go for there. Um, yeah, and we got a uh, relatively jam-packed show. We are finally going to put, uh, what is the word? We're going to put our money where our mouth is, but there's going to be no money involved. Um, yeah. We're going to, after after years of talking about and criticizing movies and TVs and games and such, we're actually going to come up with our own idea for one of those mediums whether it's a tv a movie or a video game okay um we're going to be picking like i think i've mentioned this before picking our characters picking um like actors directors if we thought about it to that level like we're each going to have different levels of how we think about it because in reality everybody thinks about movies differently so some people might be boiling it down like in sports some people like to look at all the stats some people just like to see who's good and who isn't so in this case it's kind of be the same thing um so that's going to be happening and uh yeah we're just going to go from there but first guys how you doing Uh, i'm doing pretty good i just started work up again uh for the theater we open up on friday which will probably all will be will already be open by the time this is out but yeah, no, I'm excited because I can finally leave my house. So it's going to be good times. Nice. Mm-hmm. Vass? Just trucking along. Work's getting busy. And that's about it. Nothing else too exciting. Just much of the same. The patio looks good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we uh, got a second win yesterday and decided, you know what? What the hell? I'll get it done. Last screw probably went in, uh, what, nine, eight, nine o'clock? Nine, no, maybe 9.30 even. And uh, we were like short two small uh deck boards that's it so that's we gotta not go bad at buy all. a short one and cut that and put the last two in but everything else kind of fell into place so yeah it was all good nice did you get sunburned by the way because my arms are red as fuck like not, they look my, bad my arms yesterday already, but... yeah my arms have pretty much the base tan from work working outside mm. and stuff like that but like my face i could tell was a lot more red and i'm pretty sure i had a slight case of heat stroke and oh, we good. stayed up till like one thirty, by just by chance, whatever, just chilling on the new deck. So that right. wasn't fun this morning a little bit. So you know, usually, usually I'm okay if with mornings, but man, I just not feeling work at all today. No yeah, good. luckily I um I did have to work today, but I had a pretty slack morning. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, me and Soph, we got super fucking red, like really, really red. Mm-hmm. And we weren't even outside that long or weren't really do like I was pretty much wearing jeans and a T-shirt. I was not dressed for a be- the, as beautiful of a day as it was, which, by yeah. the way, happy Canada Day or belated Capita- Canada Day to mm-hmm. all our Canadian people. And because we won't be able to say it, happy Fourth of July to all of our American friends. Um, Arturo, I'm looking at you, man. Um yeah, so this morning I just looked. I'm like, we look. Hello. Hi. 
Bruh, oh. Oh, really? I think we lost Anthony. Of course we oh, lost Anthony. No. There we go. What happened? For some reason, it kicked Anthony out, and it okay, looks like I'm he's back coming back now. in. What the fuck? What the? I don't know, man. Awkward. It's uh, it's it's actually quite fitting. We were talking about this uh, off mic that our final episode is going to be rife with technical issues because pretty much the entirety of our ru- our three year and a bit year run has been just one technical issue after another, or maybe just high standards. I haven't decided yet. No, it's technical issues. Like especially when we started off the podcast online, it's not oh, high fuck. standards. Our standards are low. We just want to be able to record. And post. Yeah, I, I tried to get yeah, like the for now. Mostly it was audio reason. stuff in the beginning. I keep getting. I see. I think it's on my end. I don't know. Like, like not many people are at my house. Not many people are using the internet. I don't know why I keep getting kicked out. I don't know. This might just be a situation where you're just going to continuously just get kicked out and come back in again. This is not. It's fitting, you know. Entertain facts are kicked out by Instagram now. For that last podcast episode, they're kicking me hey. out one more time. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Um. Anyways, yes, happy Canada Day and happy upcoming 4th of July, all you people. I hope everyone had a good Canada Day. I'm surprised at the the fact that our city, even though our city is probably broke now because there wasn't a lot of money from all the parking tickets they were going to give out to people, mm-hmm. uh, they didn't decide to just like go to specific areas of the city because it's not a huge city and like just pop off fireworks so people can just be like, hey, just look out your window. You know, here's here's something to be oh, happy yeah. about. There weren't any fireworks yesterday, like any, you know, city official ones. There were (laughs) plenty of illegal ones, but. Well, they lifted the ban. That was the big thing. They lifted the ban, actually. So they're not ticketing people that decided to put their off their own. So, right. Yeah. So it was kind of free for all at that point. If you had some, shoot them up. Actually, so I guess at that point, it's fine because they just gave the people the chance to do it. Yeah, essentially. Which well, it's nice because if you're not going to be like, for obvious reasons, I'm not blaming them for not doing it. Like, it's a very good call on their end, but mm-hmm. to oh, like totally. not be a dick about it and just say, yeah, you know, today, whatever. I assume it's for today on, or for, you know, Canada Day only. If you guys want to like pop it off, go ahead. I think that's a pretty respectable move. I think so mm-hmm. too, actually. Yeah. Now that I think about it, because I forgot that they lifted the ban. Because I was seeing a couple people in my area of town. Uh, th- popping some off and then one of my co-workers um, her sister had uh, some people over and they did the same thing so I don't know I just think it's cool and I think like when you see like kids looking at the fireworks and being like oh what the hell is that like it's a cool sight it's cool for adults I can only imagine how dope it would be being like a little kid and seeing it oh my sister had like war flashbacks when she heard the- them popping off yesterday like she was scared immediately like what's going on like what are all these big explosions and she realized oh it's just fireworks so your sister's been to war is what you're saying oh it seems like it i don't know i've never i never had that kind of you know trauma from fireworks but well i mean the loud noises like that that's pretty scary i remember the first time it went off i thought because i didn't know that like there's a we have there's one house in our area that always randomly fires off fireworks and we're glad they're fireworks because otherwise it would just be straight up gunshots and I'm saying that because there have been straight up gunshots in our area before or people held up a gunpoint. So it's like it could be either way. And so I'm glad that I can see that little thing in the air and be like, oh, it's just a fire fire uh, works. It's cool. You just fret for that one day where you look at the window and you can't see any fireworks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, well, then it's just going to be like, ah, oh, we're just going to barricade the doors and yeah, uh, figure this get away out. From the windows. Yeah, I've, I've been training for this. I know how to put together various weapons with all the stuff that we have been watching die hard macgyver all the classics getting ready oh well, and I, you. I finished yeah and i finished the last of us two re, uh as well so that one was relatively close to it how'd you like um that? i'm very I, interested in this because i know all the spoilers and i've been asking people like i'm not going to spoil it i don't know if we want to get to spoilers or not but like i'm just very interested you know to see people's takes on it I don't know if I want to spoil it either, only because I know one friend of mine is currently playing it, and I don't know if he's going to listen to this when it uh, it drops or not. So I'm not going to go into heavy spoilers, but I will say that I took it back, and I now owe zero dollars for Ghosts of Tsushima. So Tsushima. Oh. So I'm actually excited for that. Um, it's a game that I never want to play again. I don't need to play again, and Ooh. it's not because I hated it. Like I know there's a lot of people that straight up hated it. I disliked a lot of the stuff that they did 
And uh, I was talking to the guys at EB because one of the guys that was there that sold it to me and Jesse was there too and some other guy. And he's like, so what did you think about it? And so I asked him how far he was. He was relatively close towards the end, but I didn't want to say anything. I said, anybody that's ever seen Requiem for a Dream knows that that's one of the most depressing movies in the world. Okay. Mm-hmm. It is it is so depressing. This game felt just as depressing, if not more depressing than that one. It was not a fun experience and it wasn't that it was not a fun experience because it was so profound and it made you think or whatever. It wasn't fun because like they, they seemingly wanted to go out of their way to rip the fucking heart out of the game. And, and really like there were some things that happened that were that to Ellie specifically Mm -hmm. and to Joel, but they, they did not deserve what happened to them. There was, there was nothing telegraphing that they deserved that stuff like to rip and strip, everything from them as much as they possibly could as characters to service i don't know what okay just either for just shock value or just like you know i know i mentioned last episode where there's like the perspective thing and I, and trust me i'm a big fan of perspective and when when some of the stuff popped off i was not super happy but i'm like okay i'm going to see how this plays out um so story wise don't need to play it again it, whatever happened happened they needed a third a second game before this one huh. this should have been the last of us three they needed a last of us two that focused on some of the aspects like the abby character if they really wanted us to give a shit they needed to showcase that in the last of us two and then bring it to a head so that the last of us three is really that that ellie story that we wanted to see you know and 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 maybe have us care for the Abby character because they tried and it was just not working because the way that they structure the story it was not happening for anybody like it just wasn't. Well, um, oh, go ahead. So, as somebody who has not beaten the first game or even knows how the first game ends, who has mm-hmm. like looked into the second one, what I think they did wrong, and I'm going to try to like keep this as spoiler free as possible. I think they tried pulling a walking dead with a certain action and a certain way. Like they portray like the villain. I thought okay, Abby yeah. was very much like Negan or that's how they kind okay. of portrayed. Like a lot of the mannerism she does like exact, like it looks like a scene for scene of a scene from the walking dead where Negan you no know, kills somebody. <laughs> I think they set it up that way. And that's not a bad thing. I'm not going to say, Oh, you copied the walking dead, blah, 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 blah. But I think they set up a revenge arc. And they never, ever, like, finished the revenge arc. So they set up an arc that they knew the players would want to finish. And they decided rather to close it off, set up way for a third game. Yeah, I'm not, I mean, maybe not having seen it, I can't, I can't really speak to it. Because I, like, I know what scene you're talking about, because we've talked about it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm like, they just really doubled down that halfway mark where you switch to, like, make you to put abby in situations that that would make you care about her so you can be like oh she's not so bad or whatever like they they tried so hard but you know what it's ellie's story even when you're in the last of us when it was you're playing as joel it was still really about her the whole thing was about her and uh, and her and her relationships with people and obviously joel's redemption in ways like there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff there but if it's anything, The Last of Us is about those two. Fuck everybody else. So there's lots of just... I, I just wish I knew what they were going for. And it seemed like after seven years, they kind of forgot. Like they themselves, even though they created the characters, kind of forgot about the characters themselves and maybe what they would and would do and what they would and wouldn't do. Mm-hmm. And um, it were like... I haven't gone into any other videos. I've only seen Jeremy Johns's video on The Last of Us 2. I haven't watched anything else in terms of people commenting on it. But I saw Jeremy Johns's and it just, I was like, yeah, everything that he was saying. Yep. Like I, I, I it was like one of the first times I agreed with a game, with, with a review from him, like start to finish, which I have before, but like in terms of a game, right? Mm-hmm. Um, gameplay wise, nothing too special. They had some mechanics. Um, they had some decent, like they, they, the graphics were unbelievable, like really, really unreal. Um, there were some really good flashback scenes that I thought were just like, 
that when somebody was messaging me on Instagram and I was saying that they had some beautiful storytelling, when I think about it, I'm like, oh, it's only those flashback scenes that really did it for me. Like that were really like, oh, these are really beautiful moments that the rest of it didn't have. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, uh, I definitely took it back. I won't be playing it again. I don't need to play it again. I don't want to play it again. And, you know, that was about it. It was either if if EB wasn't going to give me 50 bucks for it, then I was just going to sell it on Virage sale because I saw some people put it on Virage sale for like 70. But I don't think they sold it yet. And I've been noticing more and more like there's a lot of even Ethan's keeping up today. He's like, dude, there's like so many versions of The Last of Us on here <laughs> that people are just getting rid of. Well, after the, like, I know a lot of people online claim this, like, after that first, like, big shocking thing happened in the game, they straight mm-hmm. up stopped playing and sold it. I was, I was, um, I kind of, ex- I didn't see the spoiler, but I was expecting something like that to happen. And the more I thought about it, at first I was like, oh, that's cool. But this is just me because I'm really bad at picking up on things right away. It's after I've actually sat and thought about them more and more that, like, the more I played the game, the more it actually pissed me off. In the beginning, I was just like, oh my God, right? The shock value of it, right? But the more I kept going, it didn't make it any, it didn't make it better at all. It just made it, I, I felt just like those other people. The only difference is I just kept going and finished the game. Well, I just think I would finish the game personally. Like, I know I, yeah. I, I was somebody who doesn't have any weight in it, like, and I don't really care what the characters in that sense were, like, you yeah. know, some, that action would affect me. I'd still finish it, but. I, even as a viewer, I was like, that was just a cheap shot. Like, to, to, just to get that reaction. And it just seems like, like, there's a really good line, but it's a spoiler. So I don't want to, but you can finish off. Sorry. But yeah, I'll tell it to you after. It, it's for me, I just felt like that action and the way that went down in particular, mm-hmm. like, it, with the way that some of the other characters reacted to it, like, there's one guy that, like, um, that made a move that was like super disrespectful. Right. And it's just like, Mm -hmm. I was like, this person didn't deserve this. And I I know that let's say like there was shit that went down, but like, come on, like, what do you like as a director like, I'm thinking of Neil Druckmann right now, what are you actually trying to achieve here? Because you're really doubling down on all of this. Like, I don't know. Um, and and it's just like, what the fuck? You know, like, you didn't have to do that. It was not deserved. And it just seemed like you just wanted to rip, like, the hearts out of everybody. Like, you didn't even... If there was a second game that led up to the beginning of this game, I think it would have been different. And I think it would have been received differently. Maybe worse. I'm not sure. But I feel like there was an in-between part that they tried try to shove into this one. You know? And really, like the the at the end of it is just so like, wow, you guys just again, you just stole the heart out of everything. And that's why it just makes it such a depressing game. I recall like hearing something about this, about the Last of Us like TV show and how uh, they said they were adapting the first game, but Sony said don't adapt the second game. Yeah. <laughs> like just do yeah, well. very mixed reactions. I'm not sure if that's oh, true or yeah. not, but like I can, even if the first season's very successful, I would strongly urge them to take a leeway after you know the story because from what I've heard, the story is amazing. So I, obviously, I want to see it and actually like finish the game eventually. But for the, the first second, game, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. The second game, like even though like I've only seen like very few bits and pieces, like I don't have the full story like known. Like I just really know the start and the ending. I just think, like, if that was on TV, it's kind of like, if I imagine me watching another show and, you know, things like that went down, it instantly kind of just kills the show. It's like when Michael Scott leaves the office is kind of like, but if that happened in, like, season two. Yeah, exactly. It's like you, yeah. The only other person I did see, I did lie, is Young Rippa 59. He's got a, I just like his YouTube channel. Young Rippa 59 has, like, an awesome, awesome YouTube channel. I think he's, like, almost at 500,000 followers but anyways I, I was i was listening to his his take on it too and he had a really really good one now he took it 
in a different way, like with a different lens. And I, I've, I've seen some people in terms of like their thumbnails and stuff, they were taking it to a lens that's maybe more politically charged, which could be the case. But I this time I didn't. You know, I didn't view it through the lens of any specific ideology. I just think there was some like storytelling wise, there's some dumb shit there because I'm pretty sure if I wanted to take it down that lens, I would find 50,000 different things that would support it. It's very easy to do so. And and recently I've been talking to a surprisingly large amount of people about what lens we choose to filter our information from. I think we talked about it last week too, when it came to the Captain America statue, and it seems to be a growing thing of just see how you're filtering your information and it'll dictate the kind of result you get from it, which, you know, will end up tainting or making better, whatever, whatever you think, right? It's really, uh, it's a, it's a very slippery slope on the type of conclusions that you can come up with when you do stuff like that. But anyways, last of us two don't need to play it again. And that was my a really relatively longer take than I thought on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Carl Reiner dies. Uh, I don't know him as well as like, he's a big, big time actor and comedian in Hollywood and like just super funny guy, but all of us would probably know him from oceans 11. He was Saul from yeah. oceans 11, 12 and 13. Um, so, like so funny in those movies and He's been in so many other movies along the way, comedy movies from like the early 90s, 70s, like th- that era was like the Carl Reiner era. Um, he also voiced a character in Toy Story, uh, Toy Story 4, I believe. And so anyways, that was uh, that was surprising to see. But like what, 94 years old? Still pretty yeah, long life, like yeah. Mm-hmm. Like 98. Crazy. Oh, 90, shit. Holy shit. He was doing any... movies in Toy Story 4. Damn, he was working. Yeah, man. Good. Oh, yeah. Like, dude, in this day and age at this point, anybody that gets up to that level. And he was also part of, like, the Mel Brooks era where they were just, like, comedy geniuses. Like, mm-hmm. these guys that were comedy geniuses that helped pave the way for so much of the comedy that was, like, going on. And, like, just pioneers in the industry. Um you Again, my day. generation will remember him as Saul. Everybody else will remember him as something else, but he's been around forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Seth Rogen wanted to do a TMNT. Not sure oh, yeah, how I, I feel about that. that. He it was animated, I think I, I read in there. He wanted to lean towards the animated side. Okay. I believe so. Or was it live action? I can't remember. No, because I, I think that. I think Paramount is still doing... Are they like talking about rebooting the TMT in live action? Again, but I right. assu- like everything I've seen of Seth Rogen's TMT like announcement yeah. always has like the 2007 cartoon. Okay, so I yeah, assume it's, a, it's so like, new cartoon. film will be animated, much like 2007's TMT has had some interesting names attached to it. Yes, you guys are right. Okay, hmm. I'm excited though because if he's a if he's a fan of the show, like I don't think he's gonna you know make it like stoner humor of just like the type of adult humor he's going to go for like i think it's just going to be a good children's film that has like you know some you know jokes for the adults that are kind of you know more like they're not gonna be in your face where it's like bad for children to watch it but i feel like it'll be i I have faith in him i don't know like something about weird about it because i hated a sausage party but weirdly enough i have faith that he'll be able to do this right vast um, I'm not, I'm not really too excited about it. It doesn't draw me. I'm more, honestly, I think I'm more interested in like, if they do a live action and continuance of what they did. Cause I remember Ooh. the first remake that they did, uh, live action was kind of meh. They made it, they leaned yeah. a little too much on the April O'Neil side of stuff. Um, that was the Michael Bay one, correct? Correct. Yeah. And Michael mean, Bay produced do. one. He, he only did the one. Or do you do both? He, I, I, I think, think he, he did the first and then didn't only, do the he second. produced both. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look. Let's use the power of the internet. You guys go yeah. ahead. Sorry, go fast. Also, really quickly, uh, I was wrong on this. So this is actually the reboot of the Michael Bay live action. Okay. So Paramount is releasing but this. But it's an animated. Reboot. Yeah, like this is just straight up an animated reboot. Okay. Interesting. Sorry, Bass, you were saying something about the Michael Bay ones, right? 
Yeah. Anyway, so the first Jonathan one they... Liebs, Liebsman. <laughs> Sorry. What's Jonathan it? Liebsman is the guy that directed the film. Michael Bay just produced both of them. That's it. Oh, okay. okay. So, yeah. Okay, Vax, Vax go. Thanks. <laughs> so, he, the first one was a little heavy on the April story. I think they, I think they, yeah, they definitely gave her more credit on a lot of stuff. And um, whereas the second one, I think, held a little bit more true to the turtles themselves. And so, I, I'd be interested to see a continuance from that. And I don't know. I think they kind of need to almost commit to that style and maybe just, you know, they can, they can change their story a bit. I think they have that capability that they don't, they're not pigeonholed to just a hundred percent stay um, with where they were at. Cause they, they, I can't remember if it ended in a cliffhanger. Again, it's been a while since I've seen that second one, but I don't know if they ended in a cliffhanger and it was supposed to lead to something else or whatever, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not this one though. The animated one. Yeah. I could take it or leave it at this point. I love the turtles. Um, I recently rewatched the live action. Um, the does it hold up? Ones. I don't know. No, 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 the older ones, like the 90s. Oh, yeah. The first one, I remember loving uh, Secret of the Ooze yep. and then finding out that the first one is actually the best one, but I was also young. So the first one is still my favorite. It's still the best one. Uh, Secret of the Ooze is fun. But it's like more nostalgic fun for me because I remember you and I, Vaz, we watched the shit out of it. Oh, yeah. But what bothers me is knowing the fact that a bunch of parents, like when, especially when you look at it now, they're like, wait a minute, they're using their weapons in the one and not in the other. And it was the parents' fault because they thought it was too like edgy or too violent. You're like, fuck yeah. you, parents, you ruined the second one. Um, but we got the ninja rap. So, I mean, you know. Um, but so the reason I'm saying that is I want a live action. Like I want a Jim Henson style live action one um maybe it won't make sense i don't know even know if it would look good but you know what i think at the end of the day with the technology that we have like the actual prosthetic technology that we have mm -hmm. i think we can make it happen man yeah i really do so Actually, i'm very partial with motion cap it'd probably be a lot easier but they have to I make mean, the design actually look good because like i'm yeah, looking yeah. back at the 1990 ones and like i'm gonna say the design holds up like it's actually still like it's very it's very Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, that's how they look. The newer yeah, they ones, look like they do in the comics. They, like Jim Henson yeah. did such a great job. Yeah. I think Marvel, like with the technology they use for like Hulk and shit like that, like, they can make a really good live action with the same kind of technology. Like they can still have them look, you know, cartoony, but also look real. Like how Sonic kind of looked in the movie. Like he looked like a cartoon character, but also like wasn't too distracting that he was talking with like real people. Yeah. Well, the other one too is that with the live action, if, like that was fine because yes, it was CGI, but at the same time, it did have that Hulk and Avengers where it doesn't take you out. The problem was the movies weren't that great and they were monsters. Like they didn't have to be that big. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like aren't massive. They're men, they're teenagers, they're teenage shaped. Like they're not the monsters. Yeah. Like that's what these guys look like in the movie. So it's like, I, I would love an, a live action, but I know it may not work very well. But if they do do it like they did with the TMNT and make it closer to the original, so do like the mocap CGI or Avengers Hulk version of the 1990s film yeah, with the right size and everything, then I think they could really pull it off. Because, yeah, in some scenes when you look at it, it's like, okay, they don't look too bad. And they, they don't look, you know, I don't know. When you see Ragnarok, for instance, and you see Thor and the Hulk hanging out, it's like it looks funny. It looks good, like, but it doesn't yeah, look yeah. bad. You know, that's why I, I really, really wish that they would do something like that. But if they're going to go animated, then I guess they're going to go animated. What are you going to do? Well, honestly, we could have a um, Spider Verse situation in our hands where it's just a really good looking animated movie and is also just an overall good movie. So that's I would be very much okay with that. I would be mm -hmm. so okay with that. If, if it turned out to be that great, like for myself, I'll say it. I was very impressed, like with hearing about into the spider verse but after seeing it it's become one of my favorites for sure so definitely could happen yeah. again anybody that's like if anybody goes let we're gonna take this and into the spider verse it and they do it well i'm like yep i'm on board <laughs> just yeah. do it because it's gonna be <laughs> awesome uh actually when you said mentioned uh into the spider verse what i want is insomniac to do a proper ninja turtles game very much like marvel's Ooh. ps4 oh they could definitely do I, it. I i want them to be able to like 
do their shit and be able to climb and go into the sewers and, and all of that stuff and do the Ninja Turtle stuff with fighting style like that. Because lately, any of the games that I've seen have not been good. And I've tried to play all of them. The last good games were and TMNT Arcade back yeah. for the NES. Those were real dope. The problem with the new TMNT other ones. games is they're all just very, like, kidded. Like, they're just kid games. But I know, like, since uh, Warner Bros. owns the right... Like, I know for the games, at least, they own the right because you have them in games like Injustice as cameos and, like, DLC. Oh, there you go. Uh, believe, so good. Like, they yeah. also do, like, Arkham, like, an Arkham-style TMNT game, which is basically just the exact same thing as, you know, Marvel PS4. Like, that would be a pretty fire game. Like, that'd be very fun. And if you added, like, the exactly, Assassin's like Creed, something like that, uh, for co op play, like online, that'd be fucking hype. <laughs> that'd be actually, that would be very cool, too. Yeah. yeah. But the way they did it for Injustice, there, you have your design right there. You already have Batman. You guys did the Arkham games, which pretty much redefined the way that we saw combat in video games and it's still being used in spite like up until spider-man ps4 and we still love it and we'll play it to no end because it's so good Mm -hmm. and so use the fucking turtles you can make such a great game i bet you if you go to insomnia i can do it it's like hey you guys already have new york set up just maybe make it maybe shrink it in scale and so the turtles don't look like super super tiny because obviously we can't climb up those big ass mountains or the big mountains the big ass buildings you know because you don't want them being like, I don't know, it'd be weird to do the traversal without it, like for it to be organic because they don't climb stuff. Like they're not like, I don't know, what is it like the Hulk that just climbs buildings and like breaks yeah. everything? Yeah. You know, they'd have to be, they'd have to do it in a way where it's just like, you're able to get up on the well, roof. Well, they kind of don't. Like, they, don't they scale buildings? Like they don't straight up just climb them, but like they kind of parkour up. Kind of like Mario. Right, but if they... If they do a parkour style, let's say where you, let's say you're walking your character towards a wall and it's kind of like Mario 64 where it's like you'd go off the one wall and then you go one, two, three. So you can kind of do like a quick ninja move up the wall instead of an actual parkour thing up the wall and then get yourself on the roof. Like you don't Mm -hmm. really need the horizontal or the vertical traversal too much. You could focus more on the horizontal traversal with the parkour. But to get up a a wall, let's say, it would be a matter of going through a build, like an alley, and then finding a couple of points there where you can go like one, two, three, side to side, and then get up on that other ledge. And then work with that. Like maybe you get up on a, a, a garbage can, for instance, and it'll help you kind of like, you can use a, a platforming style thing where you can use the garbage can to kind of launch you up a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. No, it does. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I, I, something like that where it doesn't turn into like, oh, you guys are just copying Spider-Man, PS4, or Assassin's Creed, or any of those ones. They could do something really cool with that, um, especially because like I've seen it done in Mario, and I think that motif works. You know. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, that'll be interesting. And then the other stuff I've got is is the boy season two trailer. Did you guys see it? Yes. I want to go in blind, so I've been uh, waiting for oh, a you while. Did it, eh? No. It's it's gonna it looks it looked real, real good. Like yep. holy crap. The fact when they mentioned that they're gonna be focusing on black noir and yep, they showed that really in this cool trailer. character that I want to see in the first season, so I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, th- this trailer doesn't give much away except for like it shows like a new head of the of the thing mm-hmm. played okay. by our played by like the amazing Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah. And they show Black Noir doing his stuff with another, I guess, what do they call them? Um, not enhanced. The that's the Avengers version. No. Um, w- sorry. What do they call like the people with the abilities? Like what's the name for them in the, oh, in the boys? I again? have no idea. I can't remember. Let's just say like the enhanced or people with like the ones with powers or whatever. Anyways, awesome, awesome sequence. And then whatever happens in there, and I, I don't want to spoil it for you, Anthony, but it's just like some of those badass shit I've seen. And it was so good. I'm so excited for it. I, I'm yeah. thinking I'm going to, it comes out in August, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I'm going to rewatch it. Uh, like probably this month, like just rewatch the first season because it's been, I think over like a little over like a year and a half since the first season came out, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. 
So yeah, I'm, I want to rewatch because I just remember watching that show and just like not being able to stop. I just love mm-hmm. the characters, love the story, love the DC feel, but like, you know, it was actually a good story and it wasn't a shitty thing I watched online. So it had that above DC's late, uh, most recent movies, which was nice. Yeah, I just think everything about it was just unreal. Like, that's what DC so should be good. like, the boys. They have the perfect vibe. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's anyways, that trailer was just did everything that could get somebody excited for sure. Um, two more things. UK regulates loot boxes officially. Finally, they view gambling as gambling, which was a thumbnail I saw from the Jimquisition today, which I thought was like, that's a really good way to put it. Finally, it is gambling. Regulate them. In fact, get them the fuck out of here. So that's good to see. Um, I guess more of a hot political topic the voice over artist of cleveland mm-hmm. um is no longer voicing cleveland oh, and, yeah. um, a poo, I think, and, right? I, and a poo yeah, yeah i think more and then a lot of actors are no longer going to be voicing actors unless they're exactly the yeah, i guess the person for them yeah. so only a black person can voice cleveland only a white person can vote a white person i think i'm curious to see if that's going to apply and I'm curious to see if they're going to be like, I'm, I'm curious to see if that gets reciprocated. Hmm. Yeah. You know, that's a hot topic, um, but it's honestly like not to kind of stir the pot here. It kind of seems like that would be the only case. Cause it's like, it, you don't want to like have that thing where it's like, cause again, I agree with the, I don't think I'm not hating on the decision. Cause I'm pretty sure both voice actors uh, claim that they're stepping down. They're not being pushed out. Mm-hmm. But I just think, you know, if you start making, you know, what do you call it? What's the word? Like if you start allowing, you know, one thing to not be used, like if you start allowing black actors to be voiced by black actors and you know, that's it. If you started allowing them to voice white people, it kind of seems like you I just know for a fact there are going to be people that backlash against it. And it's just going to be a, such a fucking stupid mess online. And I'm just not excited because it's likely going to happen. I don't have no issue with it. I genuinely don't care. I think that's great. If they're, backing out on their own will you know i think it's really noble of them i don't think it's stupid at all you know it's fair maybe they're getting tired of voicing the same role for like 20 years so honestly it could just be a way for them to get out but i just think this is gonna be stupid shit online ever since that captain america statue i've just been heated oh yeah it's it's really it's been really fucking annoying to see whatever's going on that's why i just i delete everything i see i've been deleting one thing over another that's it. It's been pretty uh, pretty nice that I haven't had to worry about it except for when I had to see that. But like if the actor wanted to do it, that's fine. I don't think he would because he probably like he's had a steady paycheck for a long time and he is an actor. Um, and so but it's just because of everything going on. That's why. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, and the my concern is that the next person that voices Cleveland, if people if he like the bottom line is it's not going to be the same voice. Okay, so it being a different voice and somebody saying, oh, that's not Cleveland. The, my concern is that people are just going to start labeling people as racist again because that's all they're going to be doing. That seems to be the easiest course of action. Oh, you don't like the new Cleveland because he's not voiced by a white actor. You're racist. No, it was a cartoon character voiced by somebody that nobody fucking knows. Yeah, if nobody even said point. he was white, nobody would know who the hell he was. I don't even know his real name. I just know that he voiced Cleveland. That's so it. You're not Seth MacFarlane. I, I only know. Mia Kunis or fucking Seth Green, you're not really uh not really yeah. known on Family Guy. <laughs> and I don't think Mila Kunis is white either. So I, I don't know. She's I voice... assume Spanish or some kind of okay. Spanish. Okay. Right. Sure. Sure. She's she, I think she's European in some some way, some form, but yeah. she's not stepping down from voicing uh Meg. Oh, she's all white skin, so, you know, labeled as white. Well, I I again, I I'm I'm just saying that I don't care what the decision is one way or another. I just think if you are okay with that and then let's say the tables get turned and they start casting people that aren't what the characters are, especially when it comes to cartoon voice acting, because that's different. That you need an actual voice. Like I said, Mm -hmm. people don't really know who the fuck these people are until they actually see them and they're like, oh shit, you're this person, right? Yeah. Uh, or let's say with Michael B. Jordan, he's straight up said he wants to go after white roles. So now they're not going to allow white people to go after, let's say, a black role. But if they allow Michael B. Jordan to play Superman, 
then that's a problem because that means that we're favor that we're playing favorites now. Yeah. And I know the argument's going to be like, well, they've been playing favorites for stuff for years. First of all, you don't know that. You can't definitively say that that was the case. They just found the right person for the right role. And second of all, if all you're wanting to do, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people just want to do this, all you're wanting to do is just turn the tables. That's all you want to do. Mm-hmm. You just want to turn the tables and you want to benefit from the outrage if people are wanting to to use that. So that's where my concern is, is that if, if one thing's not allowed, like no one's going after Dave Chappelle for playing, for using whiteface on the Chappelle show. Yeah. That shit was fucking hilarious, but nobody will ever go after him for that. And I don't, I mean, I don't think they should either because he was literally, he just, I don't know. It just doesn't see like, I don't see it the same way, but they are going back all the way and they're getting rid of anybody that had blackface. Yeah. So what did you hear about community? Well, I heard about community oh, and the office. Advanced What's Dungeons that? and Dragons. Yeah. I know. Down. And I like, was gonna... ah, here's the thing. Oh, that <laughs> is used as a joke in the show. They acknowledge that it is screwed up. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I but... just I don't know. I think there's a line between like obviously doing it with ill intent or doing it to make point. fun of how stupid it is. Which is what all these shows are doing. Like, and it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I think they've done blackface because they keep remaking Lethal Weapons. Like, they did five and six. And this white guy keeps playing the black guy. And it's just, like, the worst blackface you ever see. And they're, like, they're all awful people in the show. So you know what they're doing Mm -hmm. is, you know, done by really shitty people. So it's making fun of, like, it's just, I view it as them making fun, not, you know, making fun of, the race they're you know, not making fun of black people, making fun of people that do that with like ill intent or just do it because they think it's okay. It's kind of like Robert Downey Jr. in Tropic Thunder. That's exactly what it was. It was making fun of people that were doing that. It was mm-hmm. it was like it was the the satire of that. Yeah, it's um, I don't know. It's it's going to get to a point where um, that's going to be the the, the shoe is going to go on the other foot. But it's going to go on it, and people aren't going to recognize it. And all they're going to say is, "Oh, this person who, by the way, like may or may not have gone through anything in their lives, but because of the color of their skin, is going to be benefiting or losing out on something." And so for me, it's like if it ends up like if you boil everything down to this person is benefiting because of the color of their skin, and this person is no longer benefiting from the color of their skin, then we're actually not fixing anything. You're not fixing Hollywood, even though everybody like this is what the like that whole video of the Hollywood people like doing their I'm taking responsibility. Fuck right off. I lost so much respect for Aaron Paul for doing that shit. It was the fucking stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life in your fucking mansions sitting there crying on screen. We don't even know who half those fucking people are. And you're saying I take responsibility. Fuck you for what? So this. So this happened yesterday, not directed towards me, but somebody posted on their Snapchat story. And I don't have any ill intent to this person. I don't think they're listening to this or ever have listened to this, but I just want to make it known. I do not like have any ill feelings towards this person. What they posted, and they've been posting consi- like you know consistently throughout the past like couple months. And they said, if you celebrate Canada Day, you're a racist, like blah, 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 just going off on this on anybody who celebrates Canada Day. And I didn't respond. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. And in my mind, I was thinking, you know, if I see this person doing anything tomorrow, like anything, they're a f- like everything they've done in the past two months is fucking worthless to me. And lo and behold, what did I see last night at 11 o'clock? A video of this person out drinking with other people. And I, I don't know. Like, celebrating really Canada Day. Yeah, celebrating Canada Day. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing, buddy? Like, you can't run the whole politi- yeah. political campaign, you know, like prove trying to prove a point and then, you know, show up. It's like if Trump, fuck, I don't know. Like, it's just so stupid. It's so stupid. I can't even think of a way to describe how stupid it is. It just angered me so much. <laughs> Vass, any points? No, nothing, Dad. It's all kind of getting a little bit out of hand in my opinion i mean now everyone's just out for blood at this point and it's just things will never be the same 
some for better and some very much for worse. So I don't know. Remains to be seen, but it's just not looking good right now. <laughs> well, I'm going to say this because this is our finale and I don't give a shit. Okay. This is what I'm going to say. And if you choose to not listen to the part two of this, like the whole finale, then fine. Anybody that complains in Canada about that stuff needs to get the fuck out. And the reason I say that, if you're going to sit there and bitch about slavery while wearing your Nike shoes, which were probably put together by kids, by slave kids that only want a drink of water and you're going to shit in fresh water tonight when you go home to your nice house in water that a kid probably would die for at this point. You are one of the biggest pieces of shit this planet like has ever seen. If you subscribe to that fact, and I understand a lot of super shitty things have happened to a lot of indigenous people, but if you're going to pretend at this point because it's popular and you can do it on Instagram and on Facebook and all the socials that you actually give a shit after years of not even paying attention to what you were taught in school, because guess what? We learned this shit in school then you are a piece of shit. Very few people are going to listen to this. But for those of you that are, understand the level of hypocrisy at which you're speaking about. If you're going to complain about capitalism on the back of your iPhone, you're a piece of shit. If you're wearing anything from any most any store and don't know that most likely people at slave, like, like under slave labor made your shirt or shoes, you're a piece of shit. And again, the fact that you can go to your house and take a shit in fresh water that someone is unable to drink in another country that doesn't have the the overwhelming amount of privileges that we have here in Canada and the people that have in the States, by the way, to in a country where you're actually allowed or people say nothing when you shit on the country that you live in, then you're a piece of shit. That is all that it is. The only privilege that you should have that you should be allowed is the privilege to shut the fuck up. That's bottom line. Because you, your level of ignorance and your level of hypocrisy as an individual when you do things like that is it's such a grand scale because your short-sightedness and the it just shows how little you know about the world. When you can see my I saw a picture today of some guy that they buried. I believe it was in Somalia. They buried him up to his right past his elbows and they stoned him to death because he believed in something that the other people didn't. So if you think it's so bad here and if you want to pretend like you actually give a shit, then get the fuck out and go somewhere and see how it actually is. Cause I like our friend Dino had posted it on Facebook. Way too many of you pieces of shit are out there right now posting about stuff and not getting your mouths punched in. A lot of people are speaking about stuff, and somebody's going to think that I'm speaking about stuff out of turn, that I should get my mouth punched in. That's fine, but understand that there's somebody on that, that other end too, and if, the, if the, the goal is to change, but the tactic is to do exactly what was done in the past, and you condone that, then you're a piece of shit. So that's all I got to say on that. Not going to lie, I was a bit worried when uh, this rant started. What I will say, that was very well put together. Not actually, like, offensive in the slightest. And very true. So, got political on the last episode. But yeah, no, fuck, that was that was a good one. Thanks, Anthony. Like, pretty I, much, uh, I, like, I have nothing to disagree with, yeah. I have been, I have been talking to, to many of people on many sides of all the arguments. And uh, it's it's interesting when when you really think about how many things are going on. And so for me, that's why I choose to exercise my right to shut up on social media because I don't need social media to speak about this stuff. And I don't need a hashtag to tell me what's right and what's wrong. If it's not equal for all people when we're trying to fight for equality, then it's not equal at all. And if we have to create a hashtag and if, you take all of those people out there that snap photos of themselves at the gym and tap photos of their asses. If you took that all away, none of them would be doing it, man. It's honestly very like, uh, no, we live in a like black mirror has done an episode on this. 
so many like even community did meow meow beans where everybody's so indulged with their phone and they have to like constantly rate people and constantly share what they're doing online just to get validation and it's just that's what happens like nowadays which i've talked about this many many times how i hate when people you know post say they post blm and they just have no means of supporting they just do it for the clout because so many people do do it for the clout there have been a couple of people i've seen that have actually you know been claiming that they've been watching reading articles about like just actually becoming more aware with what they're actually posting and you know actually having a meaning behind what they're doing and i respect that like i'm not gonna sit behind you and say like the posts the posts are annoying in a sense but it's also like it's a good there's a good meaning behind it it's not a bad meaning so but i just hate when people do it for the wrong reasons reasons which is what a lot of people do and a lot yeah. of people will also use this to attack people. Like somebody, a girl posted on her story calling out three people uh, for, you know, saying all live matters. And, you know, opinion on it or not, it's just like, really, you're going to like kind of send a mob to these people because they had a different opinion than you. I don't know what they said. I don't know. You know, again, I'm not defending all lives matter. Uh, I don't really care. That's my thing. I just don't really care anymore. Uh, I want equality for everybody. I want the world to be a better place for everybody, but it just seems like this is just a mob now. And if you have a slightly different opinion than someone else, you're labeled a racist and you just kind of get shit on for it. Well, you know how the Nazis operated. If you thought anything outside of the Nazis, then they would fucking take you to a concentration camp. If you were Jewish or if you thought a certain way in, uh, in the days of Stalin, the neighbors would rat out each other and they would end up being sent to the gulags. And they would be tortured because people were ratting on each other. This is what happens. This is the shit that, like, this is this is how this stuff starts. And if anybody even paid attention to the stuff that they used before, at the tactics that they used, when someone's calling someone fascist and then using fascist tactics, I don't care what you name yourself, okay? If the, if the actions are exactly the same, then you're doing something wrong. Because there are protests that that are like good, and protesting should be a thing that people take part in. Like, if you feel a certain way about something, you you do it. You go out, you you stand your ground, and you protest, and you do it peacefully, and you do it with people around you. But at the same time, if you're gonna if you're gonna start attacking people and making and forcing them to think the way that you think, then you do it wrong. That's doing it wrong. But when you bring awareness to things that are going on, and I hope all of these protests bring awareness. I think they should. Mm -hmm. I think, like, there's so many things that are going on right now that hopefully they change. But the problem is you've got these people that take them to the extremes and they don't realize it. And also, for the people that I'm, that, you know, I would label as pieces of shit, you don't have to stay a piece of shit forever. You can change by acknowledging the fact that hey, guess what? There's so many layers to all the things that are going on and I should acknowledge the hypocrisy of me complaining about stuff like that with the clothes that I'm wearing and the privileges that I have and the house that I live and maybe you haven't done fuck all in your entire life and now you're trying to find purpose. And I understand people are just looking for a purpose, especially after being locked down for months as well. And don't think that doesn't have anything to do with it because when you're sitting there wondering what's going to happen, if you're going to have any food or anything like that, and something sparks where everybody can actually get out of their house, just the, the, the utility of doing that is very powerful. And when people are searching for meaning and purpose and all of this stuff, those are very powerful motivators. Just they shouldn't be motivators for the wrong thing and not the wrong thing in terms of the movement, but the wrong tactics, like forcing people to think that way that you want or or using using things like hashtag BLM as a weapon for compliance. That's not how what it, that's not what it should do. That doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, it makes more people realize if you start acting really crazy, people walk away from the crazies. Mm -hmm. They walk towards something that's positive. People first started walking towards this the the movements and the protests and everything because they were genuinely positive of bringing awareness to things that are going on that maybe we forgot as a society or maybe didn't think of as much. But when they devolve into things that are very reminiscent of how 
communist regimes or actual fascist regimes or people that are suppressing voices, the way that they used it to control their people, it's very, very dangerous ideology on its own. That's its own ideology. It doesn't matter what name you slap on it. You know? I do. I fuck. I don't know. Like, it's just, I did not expect the conversation. I like just turned this deep this fast, but well, it's a I guess we'll see. Nice Cause like, honestly, again, I have no issue with what's being like, I want to make this absolutely clear. And I want to speak for all of us on this because I believe I don't think I can take it out of context. We're not having a problem with the fight for equality. We have no issue. I feel like everybody should have equality. We have the issue with the extremists kind of pushing it to that level where it's like, this is hurting more than helping. Absolutely. And, yeah. So I just want to make that perfectly clear. You know, if you are mm-hmm. actually supporting BLM and you are, you know, being true to your word and you're trying to, you know, not do it for clout, but actually do it because that's something you believe in. Like we have no issue. I have no issue. It's the people that kind of just post in their story, like a preacher and then turn their back and, you know, do fucking shit that goes against everything they've been saying for the past month that I have an issue with because it's hypocritical and it makes the entire organization and everybody else who posts it look like fucking idiots based on your stupid actions. Well, it's like what happened with me too, where at mm-hmm. first it was something that was genuinely doing good by bringing awareness to people like the Harvey Weinsteins in the world. But then what happened is it ended up like, I don't want to say it turned into a joke, but it did. Like I was seeing men and women just joking about it. I, had, I got a, a text from I, I got a text from a friend of mine who's a female once, and I was like, um, I was going to uh, I was uh, I was out of town, and we were all meeting up or whatever. And she's and I was like, oh, okay, like I'm I'm on my way to meet that thing. And then she's like, hashtag me too. 